seven. Well, hello, friends, and uh, welcome back to another DIY project. I haven't done one of these in a couple years, but I just got my new iPhone, and uh, I need to get some test footage on it, and I was doing a DIY thing, so I was like, why not record this, and maybe it'll turn out good, and uh, I can turn it into a video. So what I am doing is uh, I've got a little home gym right here. You can't see it super well because there is a ladder in the way, but uh, let me turn you around. There we go. Got my bench. Just some tools that we're working with. This is where we do laundry. These are mine. Uh, this is all Bowflex equipment. I uh, bought these about five years ago and uh, they've been a great investment. Bowflex bench. And I want to add a pull-up bar up on one of these rafters here so I can do pull-ups without having to set the bar up on my door frame inside. So uh, yeah, what I went ahead and did was I picked up a uh, two by eight, eight feet long, and I cut it in half into two four foot slabs. I would have preferred a two by 10 or a two by 12, but they're quite a bit more expensive. So we just went with the two by eight and I think it'll be fine. So we're gonna come up here and we're gonna hang it off of those aiming straight down, two of them about three or four feet apart. And then we're gonna run a piece of conduit between them down here that we can use as a pull-up bar. So let me get some of that done and we'll see how it looks. Okay, I went ahead and dropped in three screws preemptively because this is gonna be a little awkward to get the first one in. So the screw is already started. It's just barely popping out the other side. I can just feel the knob of the tip coming through the wood. And these are three inch deck screws, a box about this size, which is probably the smallest you're gonna be able to find unless you get lucky. It's gonna run you about 10 bucks in California and probably cheaper everywhere else in the world. Um, so let's go ahead and get this hung up there so we can see what we're looking at. All right, we got the first board hung. We've got three screws into the wood. I went ahead and checked it on my little turbo level. Ideally, I would want a bigger level, but for this application, I think just a little turbo level just to make, its relative, make sure it's relatively level will be fine. And I could also add washers to these screws right here to further distribute the pressure around the entire piece of wood. But honestly, with the amount of screws that we have available, I'm just gonna drop like eight or so, maybe 10 into the upper section of each board. And I think that'll be more than enough. And if it breaks, uh, well, then I'll have this moment to blame. You know, I'm actually having kind of fun doing this and I think I am gonna try to make this as good as possible and post it. So I went ahead and grabbed my little tripod. So now I can hold you out at arm's length if I so chose um, and set this up so you can actually see me working while I'm up there like we did in the last video. So let me turn you around and we'll do that. All right, let's uh, get that second board up there and then we'll start working on the next steps. Big handful of screws. All right, we're actually gonna scoot you over like this and move the ladder because I don't wanna have to cut this piece of conduit. It came as four feet and I think four feet is fine for a pull-up bar. So I've gotta bring the other piece of wood slightly further out than I was anticipating. And uh, so we gotta scooch the ladder. That always happens when I hit record. Um, let's work on the second one. have these two bad boys hung up here mm, mm, mm. with eight count them eight three inch deck screws in each one we are going to add some conduit straps and we need three 
three quarter inch conduit straps for this three quarter inch EMT electrical conduit. I wanted to get rigid, but they didn't have it at Home Depot and I wasn't about to go over to the electrical supply house and spend three times as much. I'm pretty sure with only about three feet of this exposed, about this much, it's not gonna bend. Unless somebody like really fucking rams on it and tries to break it, I'm pretty sure it'll be fine. And if it does break, I can just go buy a better piece of conduit in the future. So it was only like eight bucks. So uh, let me go get those straps and we'll keep rolling. All right, we've got some three quarter inch, two hole conduit straps. And I got four of them. I'm gonna put two on each side. We could have, of course, put like up to 10 on each side, but I really don't think that's necessary. And we're also gonna drill some little holes right through the, the peak of it right there where my fingers are. And uh, we're gonna put like metal screws or tech screws through the strap into the pipe so that it doesn't spin whilst in these bad boys. So we're gonna need to get some drill bits for that. I might be able to, uh, we're gonna make it work. I'll drill it and then I'll tell you how I did it. No, you know what? I'm actually gonna hang the thing up there and I'm gonna do the drilling up there because then it will have backing from the pipe itself and I think it'll be solid enough to drill the holes so that I'm not having to hold them awkwardly with like tools and try and get the holes to go through. I think it'll be easier this way. Square drive bit. I wish I had a shorter one. These six inch ones are really useful in certain applications. Not this one per se, but that's okay. I didn't hit the light bulb. That would have been real silly of me. Uh, I actually decided I am gonna cut this conduit. There's the mark. There's almost a whole foot we're gonna take off here. Um, I thought I'd just let a little hang out on each side, but if we're gonna do this, let's fucking do it, right? All right, this is what we're gonna use to cut it. Just a standard DeWalt Sawzall with a little tiny metal cutting blade on there. This is the end we just cut. You probably can't see it super well, but there are some metal burrs on the end there and I don't want somebody to get a shallow cut on their hands. So I'm just gonna take my electrical knife. This thing goes through the paces every day, metal on metal, on wood, on drywall, chipping away. Whatever that stuff they put in on the outside of houses is stucco. That's the word, chipping away stucco. You know, it's a tool, use it. All right, so we got the end all cleaned up just by dragging our knife around in a circle. Again, I'm not gonna show you how I do it because I don't want you cutting yourself and being like, he told me to do this, way." Um, not that you would do that, but there are people out there on the internet who do shit like that, trust me. I have to deal with them on occasion. Um, so let's get this hung up there. We've already got our first strap in place, so we're pretty much over the hard part. started for it to get pushed in the wrong direction and just go flying and but that didn't happen. Alright, two straps in place. Let's just take a step back and look. I think that looks fabulous. Let me just push that over a millimeter and let's get the second straps in place. Top one is stripped, but it's in. 
I hate square drive screws, number twos. They're just not my bit. If I had some smaller deck screws, I would use deck screws for the whole thing. They have a star-shaped bit and they don't really strip out, which is great. Oh. I can actually show you. When people say deck screws, they're usually referring to torque screws that use this style of bit. And you're probably not gonna be super familiar with them unless you're some kind of tradesman or you're a handy person that gets involved with DIY projects. Uh, but they're very good screws. They're a little bit pricier um, than your standard like Phillips, but they're very, very good screws. Um, so we just have to get the bar connected to the straps. So we need to punch a hole through, and I have a tech screw lying around here somewhere. So let me see if I can find that. And we'll get this finished up. But yeah, that's our uh, pull-up bar done. Let's get the ladder out of the way and see uh, see how many pull-ups we can do. All right, I'm taking I'm taking my tools off for this. 25 pounds makes a big difference. All right. Oh gosh, should I take my shirt off? No, you thirsty girls. If you want that kind of stuff, you got to go to Instagram. All right, let's do some pull-ups. I might have been able to squeak another one or two out there, but I gotta do an outro and pull ups are fucking hard. <sighs> Let's just get a little bit of a close up. Uh, that's the tech screw right there. These are all the same brand screw. You know, there's a lot of variety in the way that you could do this, but I think the way that I showed is a really simple, cost effective way of doing it. And this whole project, all these materials, cost about $25, which is pretty damn cheap. That's as much or less than you would pay for a pull-up bar you bought on Amazon that hangs on your door frame. And not including the trip for materials, I would say in terms of labor, this took less than an hour. So uh, I would highly recommend that anybody who wants a pull-up bar at home make one of these for themselves. And uh, of course, just do it right. <laughs> if you do it wrong and it breaks and you get hurt, that's not on me, that's on you, boo. But I love your faces and I'll see you guys here next time. Anyways, yeah, make sure you like the video to support the channel. Make sure you leave comments supporting the content creator and uh, telling, telling me how hot I am. Yeah, I know. God damn, I'm disgustingly hot. Oh, yeah. And uh, did I forget anything? Oh, and uh, be sure to share on social media. We really like that over here at the uh, Wolf Door LLC. Thank you, fam. See you next time. Bye-bye.